And uh, one day she, I, she seen me looking at, in the garage at her Cushman and she gave it to me. And uh, I've really kind of loved them ever since. An American original, an antique about to start up for the first time in a long time. A seasoned pro instructor, a rookie rider. So what could go wrong? I think you should learn to kick. Okay, so just, just give it a kick? No. And it's not gonna take off anywhere, right? Well, I could. <laughs> is, is there not a neutral? Yeah, I, it's almost a neutral. I oh, think. it's almost a neutral. <laughs> almost? Maybe that's why Donna is sitting this one out. No, that's not happening. There is always an adventure waiting in Bob and Donna's garage at American Drive Series. This one here is one of the very first uh, Cushman's that was built. Cushman Scooters, each with a story to tell. The Cushman Scooter Company started back in 1903 in Lincoln, Nebraska by Everett and Clinton Cushman. They engineered and built engines for farm equipment. Cushman Motor Works was launched in 1913 and their four-stroke Husky engine revved to life in 1922. Auto glide scooters hit the road in 36, trying to accelerate sales during the Great Depression. As a boy, Bob Peterson fell in love with the first one he saw while on his paper route. And one day, a customer noticed him noticing her scooter. One day, she, she seen me looking at, in the garage at her Cushman, and she gave it to me. And uh, I've really kind of loved him ever since. How many Cushmans would you say you've had throughout your life? You really want me to be feel old? Huh? <laughs> uh, I've, I've I've got about thirteen or fourteen now, but through the years, a lot of them, maybe I I, I don't know, fifty or sixty. And there were lots of styles. The Model Fifty Three, better known as the Cushman Airborne, was designed to be dropped by parachute with Army Airborne troops in World War II. We built one they called a Airborne, and it had big fat tires on it, like them. That's a, the frame of that is an Airborne, but they'd drop it out of a helicopter or airplane, and they'd bounce it, and the soldiers would ride it around in to get utilities or whatever. Other models were used on military bases for messenger service, and soon caught on nationwide as a cheaper way to get to work for men and women. The reason they started making the step through like this is because the women didn't want to straddle it and get grease on there. The, the women started riding them to work and they didn't want to get oil splattered on their skirt or whatever. So these they figured would be a little cleaner. Post-war, there was the Turtleback models 50 and 60 with the economy Highlander. The most successful was the Eagle, which more like a motorcycle. It was in production for about 16 years. But by 1965, all production stopped. These machines just kept running. And Bob just keeps rebuilding them in his garage. It's a fun engine to take apart and train different people on working on engines. It's all visible. You can see everything you need to see. You don't have any electronic things to worry about. Well, and you have a lot of parts too, so you, you know your way around these things. Oh, I got a lot of parts. <laughs> yeah, that's the trouble with me. I, I can't pass up a deal, you know. His wife Donna loves them too, partly because they keep him busy. It's awesome that he comes out here and has something to do. I love it. And unlike the cars she helps him work on, he can run solo with these guys. He, he likes working on Cushman's. It's easier than the cars because it's something he can handle by himself. I don't have to help every time. But Bob still holds out hope that Donna will come along for the ride someday soon. I, I bought one of them, it has a sidecar, 
and she couldn't figure out what all the fuss was, but, because uh, uh, she ain't gonna ride in that sidecar. No way, so. But you tried. I tried, so I haven't, I'll get her, she doesn't drink that much, so I can't get her in that sidecar. So she has a strategy and maybe a plan to get me to ride in the sidecar. No, that's not happening. I told him I'm never gonna sit out there. I'm not gonna be a sitting duck, no way. I know how he drives, there's no way that's happening. But she doesn't mind watching, especially after Bob wheels out one more for me to try for the very first time. This should be interesting. Okay, we, we saved one for last. Bob, what year is this? 1948. 1948. It's a little, a little before my time. Yeah. You think I can drive it? Ride it? Drive it? Whatever you do to it? Well, you are going to get an education. Driving school in session. This is a throttle. Okay. But you got to remember, as you give it the gas, it's to you. Throttle check. You give it the gas this way. Okay. Okay. Now, here's the deal. See that pedal? Yep. That's the clutch. This one right here. That's the clutch. You don't really, if you, it's got an automatic transmission okay. or shift. So for your first bout. Let it do it, let it do the work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually put you in high gear. Oh, so this shifts the gears right here. Okay. Yeah, hopefully that this is your right. chance to get rid of me, Bob. Yeah, it shoots right. off like a rocket. But surely Bob knows how to keep me in control of this thing, right? Time for a kickstart, or is it? I think you should learn to kick. Okay, so just, just give it a kick, yeah, and yeah, it's not gonna take off anywhere, right? Well, I could. <laughs> <laughs> is it not a neutral? Yeah, I, it's almost a neutral. I oh, think. it's almost a neutral. <laughs> it's like almost driving off a cliff. Okay. Hire so, your friend to watch. I, I don't want it to take off and break my camera. <laughs> uh, just just go ahead kick. and give a kick. A nice stop kick. All right. That wasn't good enough. So a couple tries of not being good enough, then. Okay. All right. Yes. So how come it's not going anywhere? Started. Kind of good to know how to stop. Not as easy as it seems. So where's the brake? Just so I know. That's the brake. The yeah. brake is where the gas is, and you turn. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Now wait. I'm gonna lean it the other way, and I get the gas out. Okay. All right. Now you're set to go. Okay. All right. See you later. Twist it to you. You got her. Come on. All right, and we are off. Yeah, that just happened. Tight turn radius plus a guy that forgot the brake is where the gas pedal should be. I was close. I almost wiped out right away. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Nice. I feel like Steve McQueen in The Great Escape. I gotta jump a fence somewhere. GoPro on my head, a little more confidence this time. Let's go for round two. Yeah, oh yeah. And I'll tell you what, you absolutely love it. Because
because they go faster than you think. They do. Don't sell them short. Yeah, I think I learned that right out of the gates. By the way, Ryan behind the camera had wanted to put this ride on his bucket list. But now... Ryan, you still want to try it? Not if you almost ran into the garage. Sharing the thrill of this awesome piece of history, revived and kept alive by Bob and Donna in their amazing garage. For more on this series, from Jags to Model T's to Austin Healy's, take us for a spin.